And now, Minion Works presents Freelance Heroism. This week's Freelance Heroism episode is brought to you by some very special patrons who donated at the producer tier. All right, we just want to say thank you to all the patrons out there. Um, thank you for donating the money to help us pr- uh, create this better podcast. And I think that we're going to give you guys a quality product. You know, uh, around lap two, round lap three, maybe my legs started to go to sleep. So I knew I knew that the tide car needed to go a little faster. And um, but I, I think that the money that y'all donated to the Patreon is going to help us uh, in the points race. So I just want us to give a big shout out to uh, Monique Walker. Uh, you know, we, we always, you know, we are all, you're all we got, uh, Chris deeds, uh, good man, knew him from back in Nam came and he joined a pit crew. He's just a good guy. Uh, Chris Sones, uh, his last name spelled weird. I still like him though. Uh, he does give me some weird eyebrows sometimes, but it's, you know, it's all part of the game. And, uh, Orient underscore tiger who, who, who uses a pseudonym to mask his true identity. I, I believe he might be a superhero or something. <laughs> uh, we just want to say thank you guys so much for, uh, donating. And uh, just getting, you know, getting this whole team in this this race, uh, we're, we're going to do good. And uh, we'll see you next Sunday. Woo! <laughs> Hey, freelancers, and welcome back to Freelance Heroism. I'm Dees. And I'm Rachel. We're a D&D 5e actual play podcast. Our current campaign is The Curse of Strahd, a gothic horror-inspired setting in the dangerous and fog-shrouded land of Ravenloft. While the setting is serious, our heroes are not. Will they actually be able to defeat the vampire lord Strahd and restore peace to Ravenloft? Or will they just steal goats and invoice villagers? Join us and find out on this episode, The Jugger Duck. <laughs> <laughs> Last episode, the party continued their battle against the invading members of the site who attacked the leaky under the evil professional's orders. Shunikote remained in the woods and took shot at one of the tougher sharpshooter site members. Meanwhile, Adri broke down the manor's door in search of the evil professional. The professional followed Adri's trail of destruction and found her and Serena, their maid, within the lab. Suspicious of his evil double in disguise, he ordered Adri to tie up Serena. However, Adri sensed the invisible evil professional hiding nearby. Adri swung her sword and missed, breaking more furniture in the process. The professional revealed his evil double and after some banter, set him alight. Huzzah! I am destroying this house. Destroying the house! (laughs) (laughs) Ha ha! That's that game show guy. Okay. You know what I'm talking about? Uh Uh-huh. Hi, I'm Chuck. Go chuck yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and welcome back to Is This a Door? last episode we killed a bunch of shit innocent people well jake doesn't know that yeah he should recap yeah i still don't know the enemies oh there was a great mass of the of the uh the unwashed evil kavir's followers and we bravely bravely and valiantly defended valiki and just slaughtered dozens of them oh it was glorious and on the inside of town adri (laughs) <laughs> uh, we killed innocent people. Adri's going to feel real bad about this later. Um, <laughs> although, not right now, she's still, like, kind of, like, drunk on wine, but also, like, has, like, adrenaline going on fighting Evil Kavir. 
No wonder she doesn't. You have any time. idea the guilt trips I'm going to play when you start raising the dead? So many, so many. Yeah. It's gonna be great. Although, also, like, how good are these people if, like, they were very easily convinced to? They're starving peasants. They're going to do anything for money, practically. If you think yeah, that like, this guy was just paying them to do this and wasn't strong arming them by like kidnapping family, family members or children. poisoning them and offering them the antidote if they did X Y Z, that's true. Yeah. Okay. I'm sure it was more than like, here's five silver. I'm really glad you guys rolled all those insights and perception checks before so you decided good. to kill a bunch of innocent people. Well, I'll start doing that See, now. David, that's how you guilt a motherfucker. <laughs> I'll just wait till she brings them back and she doesn't get the right soul. What? Oh. Is that a thing? Mm-hmm. In Ravenloft? Yeah. Yes. You gotta make sure you get the souls back. Oh, no. You're gonna cross, <laughs> cross pollinate a bunch of people. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you yeah, know what the best part is? is? Some of them come back mad because they have left their bodies. They're supposed to go to Celestial, but they can't leave Ravenloft. And they've given into madness. Uh -oh. Of the fact that they'll never uh -oh. be at rest. Uh -oh. You put them back into their body and they realize that they're trapped mm -hmm. in Ravenloft. Oh, yeah. Just living to die again. It's bad. And you put a child into the body of an 80 year old man. So you've sentenced that child to death. <laughs> oh, my God. And then you put an 80 year old man who is actually a pedophile into the body of a child. <laughs> oh, my God. Worst case scenario. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, you might just want to cut your losses here. It could be worse. Could be worse. And what not resurrect all those people? Oh, uh, we pick up outside of Leaky. Chunakote just got hit with a smoke bomb that, as he comes to find out, is filling the area fast with smoke and gas. And the gas is actually a vaporized form of wolf's pain. Those sneaky taken, bastards. He's already taken one hit from it. And he is up. All right. First thing I got to do is get the hell out of this smoke. So you said it's like, what, about 20 feet or so? Yes, sir. All right. So I can easily get out of that with a move. You get out of it. All right. Now, any targets in the area? Now that you can see, but now you have about a 20-foot wide, pretty tall cloud of smoke in front of you. You can't see through. <sighs> and they were all running away, correct? The majority of them, yes. You saw most of them once you dropped the archer. They all split. All right. Well, then I am going to head back to town. I am whistling for the wolves, and I am heading back to town. You don't hear either of them. Oh, now I'm seriously pissed. All right. I'm going to have to use what's that find animal thing I can do if I use if I'm in a forest. I can use a spell slot. This is like the Dragon Ball Z of anger for Jake. It's like, oh, now I'll show you my true angry form. I'm really, really angry now. All right, that will let me detect wolves within the six miles. All right. Oh, my God. <laughs> Are there any in the area? <laughs> no. Like, I'm not picking up Fauna or Storm or nobody. Fauna and Storm uh, were left with Ludo at the temple. Oh, that's right. Okay. I just love the uh, idea that you have a detect wolf spell. Well, I could pick any animal, but you know. But you did have you did meet two wolves that you did find yeah. out, and you were not picking either of them up. Oh. Wow, Kavir Evil, you is really fucked when I get old him. Like, he's seriously fucked when I get old him. He's slippery, so. I had, oh, I got claws, baby. He's getting ripped. He's getting shredded. He is getting shredded. Like I'm gonna eat his heart shredded. Uh, actually, if you could just not eat him, I need that body. <sighs> How many pieces? I need all of it. All of the pieces. Okay, but there can be pieces. We've established that. Okay, I'm good. All no, right. I said I need all of the pieces. Yes, but you said pieces, which means he can be in pieces. I got it. All right, going back to town. All right, so he's uh, heads off that way. <laughs> heads off, yes. That'll be one of the pieces. <laughs> All righty. Back in town, inside the basement, in the lab, there are th four people, technically five, one's hidden. 
Are you Dr. Midnight in us right now? You're Midnight in us, you <laughs> motherfucker. <laughs> you charming ass motherfucker. One is Smooth partially on fire down. getting it out. The other one's hidden behind stone. One's standing there in ball bearings. What you're telling me is one of them's burning and the other one's hard as a rock. That's what you Always. Say. Okay, sorry. That's what it is in the hours of midnight. That's uh, not super weird. What you're saying right now. That's what you're well, One's just sitting back puffing his pipe. Puffing his pipe? Who's puffing his pipe? Is the one as hard as a rock or the one that's burning with five? The one who's sitting on the rock. I'm done. I relinquish all of my time to the man from California. I a girl who just doesn't know where she's at, sitting there with a knife in her hands. <laughs> it's like a fucking made-for-TV movie. She didn't know why she was standing there with a knife in her hand. He didn't know why he was on fire. Find out on I have a knife and you're on fire <laughs> Thursday at eight because that's when you fuckers eat dinner. <laughs> Fucking old ass fires. <laughs> <laughs> old ass pieces of shit watching movies on Lifetime at eight in the afternoon. <laughs> oh, fuck, 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 fuck. Oh my god. I think you broke me. <laughs> Play fucking tennis or something, bro. <laughs> Collect us. Oh. So, oh my go. god. Oh Jesus Christ, man. That's, that was That's my Dr. Midnight. That's my his movie premiere, man. We're going to make characters for everybody. I just can't wait for you guys to meet Dr. Midnight yeah. in game. That's oh, God. <laughs> Oh, that's actually Strahd's voice. Actually, He's a bard that plays a saxophone. I bet. I oh dear I God! Can't, I can't make that game. So. <laughs> it's okay. I'm better to do on Friday nights than you. The game will make you. No. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I don't know what that means either. Never say that again. Eight o'clock this Thursday. The game will make you. <laughs> you can't run from Doctor Midnight because Doctor Midnight will be there. That's creepy. Everything about this game has been creepy. This is a misfire. Can we start again? All right. So we've established where people are standing and where everyone is. Mm -hmm. Sorry about all the editing you're going to have to do. Leave it in. Leave it in. Leave it in. Okay. All right. So you're up to here. Okay, uh, is he still on fire? Is he, has he decided to put it all out? He got it out. Motherfucker. I can still see his uh, outline. Oh, he's still visible. He took out the, he turned off the invisibility. That's right, that's right. Sorry. It's been a whole 45 minutes since he played. So. Yeah, no worries. Clearly my memory. It, it's all that heat, dude, going to your head. Okay, I'm going to use the mage hand to close the door. Uh, to the stairs. All right. And uh, while I'm still sitting in my chair, I'm going to try to uh, gesture for Rachel to keep attacking. <laughs> my my uh, Rachel keep attacking gesture, or my Adri keep attacking gesture. There we go. <laughs> is this. It's, uh, it's like bird feathers. <laughs> and then... <laughs> okay. I guess the hammer swing. All while right. he goes, seize turtle stealth. <laughs> uh, you gotta be careful. Let's see turtle stealth again every time. Hashtag see turtle stealth. I'm not giving up on that. It got one like. I'm not done with it. Oh, hell no. I'm gonna do a comic about sea turtle stealth. Dude, I was at SeaWorld. I almost got a picture with the, uh, with the sea turtle. I almost sent it to you. Oh, man. That would have been fantastic. I bet if you took the photo, he wouldn't even be there. He wouldn't. Because that's what the stealth is all about. Right. I'm going to postpone my turn, I guess. Right. AJ, you're up. Okay. Well, I guess I'm going to continue attacking. Bonus action. Spiritual weapon. So make a spell attack on him. Um, it gets advantage. It does very poorly. 
<laughs> 14 to hit. He dodges right out of it. Okay. Um, and then I will attack with my sword. All right. Uh, I still have a uh, holy weapon going. Um, Can I give advantage to a holy weapon? I already have advantage from my spiritual weapon. Okay. 27 to hit. That hits. Okay. Let me get, let me get all my dice. Uh, it's starting at 27 hits. Need that mm -hmm. one. I need these three. I need this one. And he's not a fey fiend or undead. Well, this is a, I'm learning a lot about how Adri sees Kavir. Right? He's not a fey fiend or undead. I'm like, no, <laughs> motherfucker. No. 21 damage. Yeah. And, uh, that's uh, it for my turn. All right. Are you supposed to turn back again? No. Uh, I'm going to to take action. All right. Uh, how far away from me is he? Other side of the room. You could reach him easily. Yeah. Has he moved from the positioning that he was in? No. He's still standing up against the wall? For now. Okay. Well, I'm going to get off to the side of him so I can still get advantage. Okay. Yeah, I'm just going to do like a, one of those cool action movie slides across my desk like at the, the hood of a car. Like, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Then I'm going to put my feet flat on the ground and shuffle so I don't have to make the roll on the fucking ball bearings. All right. And uh, sneak attack. Can you sneak attack another rogue with uncanny dodge? Yeah. Sneak attack has nothing to do with that. It's whether or not you get advantage. Okay. No, because back in 3-5, you couldn't sneak attack another rogue unless you were X amount of levels higher than them. I, I don't I didn't think I read anything about that. But in fifth edition, yeah, I, I don't read anything either. Yet. I don't recall any of that in fifth edition, but you're right, it wasn't three five. Uncanny dodge, starting at fifth level, when an attacker that you can see hits you with an attack, you can use your reaction okay. to have the attack's damage against you. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Well, I rolled a 23. So All right. Pretty sure that hits. You hit. That's going to be 35 damage. Which he has. Does he round up? Never. Yeah. Never play the odds. <laughs> All right. He looks at Adri. Where's the girl? Oh, no. I'm going to uh, message Adrian's brain. I can just not answer him. No, it's no. Just, I'm going to message your brain, and I'm going to go. La 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 la. I'm going to be really loud and obnoxious. Okay. <laughs> She's having a fucking stroke right now. She's like, ah! <laughs> Ow. All right. Um, although also like for a second I legit thought that you were talking about Serena. So <laughs> Adrian might just think about, oh, where is Serena? I hope she's okay. I'm I'm literally <laughs> yelling out circus music. <laughs> 24 against Adrian JC. That will hit. Give me a con check for poison. He rolled a one, David. What are you talking about? He rolled a one and completely missed Adrian. Oh, yeah, that's crazy. I don't know what. What did you think he? What did you think he rolled a twenty-four? That's crazy. Those numbers aren't alike at all. Not at all. <laughs> yes, skin. Where's my daughter? To who? Adrian. No, 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 no. <laughs> you, you can't cast that spell twice in her turn. <laughs> it's a cantrip. I'm still, I'm still turn. messaging. On your turn. <laughs> oh, damn it. Okay. Ad God damn it. Adri. You feel compelled to speak. What? I don't get like a wisdom save or something? You can, but. To not you talk? You don't know who cast the spell in the room. Well, I don't want to answer. <laughs> Don't blame me. Blame Kavir. I want to 
can I do like a is there a save I can try you to roll wisdom? Okay. Um add bonuses, quick. That's not good. That's I, not no, I'm fine. No, I'm, good. I'm fine. I'm fine. That's not the face you make when you roll a successful roll. <laughs> no, I'm I'm absolutely fine. Uh twenty-five. Oh, you feel extremely compelled to speak, what? but you're able to hold your tongue. Okay. But you don't know why you feel compelled to speak. Yeah, that's weird. But you have flashbacks going back to even Victor making comments about certain things about this room. Oh, uh, yeah. All right. And he disengages and dashes for the door. Yes, sir. Uh, or he runs into me and I rip him to shreds. He has you're to roll. Even close. To disengage, he's going to have to roll not to slip when he exits the uh, grease. Yes, he does. Disadvantage uh, from the ball bearing. Disadvantage, but doesn't he have... He has to beat a 16. That's the uh, spell DC. Lucky you, it's an 18. As he moves directly through and reaches the door. I don't get an attack of opportunity, do I? Not with the disengage. Wait a minute. He moved. He rolled two rolls and they both beat. Damn it. He's fast. Okay. Damn your nimbleness. I'm going to pull my lever and make the stairs fall into a slippery slope. <laughs> he slides back into the room. Ha <laughs> ha! Well, he's not out the door yet. You closed it. Yeah. And we're outside with Jake. I'm still headed towards the house. Give me a reflex. Dexterity? Yes. 21. All right. You take four damage from a grenade, an explosive that's thrown at you as you're able to dodge it as it's rolling. All right. Can I see who did it? Uh, you can stop to take a perception. I'm going to have to. I didn't see shit. <laughs> I am not perceptive. You don't even have to hit Jake with the grenade. You just have to make sure he knows it went off, and he'll look for you. He'll stop doing what he's doing to come kill you. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm going to kill somebody. Mental Try. note, if I ever need to distract Jake, I just need to buy a cat and be mean to it and throw grenades. All righty. Well, any animal would, would suffice, really. Cats are and easy, and I hate cats. We're back inside. <laughs> Whose turn is it mine? Uh, yes. Okay. I am going to I'm gonna grease the stairs. Oh no no! You know what? Grease the door handle so he can't. Don't you have any new tricks? The old ones work fine, especially against scrubs like you. Actually, you know what? I. Do I even want to grease the door handle? Is that even worth it? That's just like a practical joke, kind of waste of grease. I'm just going to run up behind him. He's focused on trying to get the door open, correct? Yes. All right, I'm going to dash up behind him on a sneak attack him. Fucking scumbag. Oh, for fuck's sake. I get advantage when he's facing the other direction, fiddling with the door. Mm. Sure. You should. Holy fucking ball sack and shit. Are you serious? Whatever. If I hold on, I'm roll this is a test roll. Okay. Fuck me right in the ass. Okay, never mind. Have have fun, David. All right. Go, your turn. You missed him twice. It's Adri's turn. I rolled an eight and then re rolled an eight. And I was like, this is a broken app. This app is broken. Yeah, eight with bonuses added. So I rolled to hit again as the tester, and I rolled a twenty. And I was like, "Get the fuck out of here!" Um, how far? Oh, that's away, painful, man. How far away is Evil Kavira from me? The room is not more than thirty feet. Okay. I will first cast. Uh, I'm gonna cast hold person. Let me just see if I need to do it at a higher level. I can do it at a higher level. Oh, that just targets more than... Okay. I will cast 
whole person on Evil Kavir. He has to make a wisdom saving throw. Oh, wait, actually, I... first, sorry, sorry, no, first bonus action, because I have to do this in order. First bonus action, um, I want to end my holy weapon early. I'm going to exclude myself and Kavir, Master Professional. So Evil Kavir has to make a constitution saving throw as there is a burst of bright light from my weapon. Uh, Nat 20? Uh, he's a jerk. He still takes half damage. <laughs> oh, double. Uh, so he takes 16 radiant damage. Half of that or? No, that's already halved. Okay. And then I will cast hold person on him. So he has to make a wisdom saving throw. And that is a 18 on wisdom. Uh, I believe he passes. I think you're what, a 17? 18? Yeah, I think it's a 17. Yeah, it's a 17. You're, yep. So he pops through. Okay. Uh, Shakes it off. Good <sighs> jerk. And then uh, move action, I will move up to him. All right. Okay. He disengages again, out the door, closes it behind, and runs upstairs and out. <laughs> what a jerk. Does that... That takes some of his movement, though. Like, to open a door his, and close a door, right? He is fucking fast. But he doesn't get as far away as he would normally, right? He gets faster yeah. than all of us. He's not as fast as an arrow. No, he probably is. No. Mathematically speaking, I think he's as fast as an arrow. How fast does an arrow travel a turn? Mm. I have no clue. I haven't looked up feet per second. I think but, it depends check. on the probably the range of the bow. But he is upstairs out of sight right now. Yeah. And you two are left alone downstairs. Jake, your turn. I I still can't see anything. I'm still headed back. All right. So I guess I'm just, you know, because I didn't see the guy with the grenade, so I'm just going to keep heading back. And I guess I'll throw a cure wounds on me while I'm going back. Uh, I'll use second level slot on that. And that is 14 points back. Pretty fast. Uh, arrow goes 225 feet per second. Yeah, he's not going that fast. No, he's about half as fast as that. Muzzle velocity. It's a beautiful thing. Plus, I have a magic bow. I wonder if you could do that. If you could grease yourself and then try to use like evasion or dodge like a rogue does to make an arrow glance off of you? Like an athletics check or an acrobatics check? check. I would the on that you've got like grease your hand and then just wait for the arrow and just touch it and it slides off. <laughs> well it, you you're looking at a broadhead arrow. It's you know you know, you know it's either a broadhead or a bodkin or something like that. It's it's gonna cut. You slide, you tap the side of the arrow. You know, well, if you had like a deflect arrow's feet, you could do it. Hmm. But like, if you're if you're trying to like actually have the thing like ricochet off you, it wouldn't do that. No, I just mean like, what if you're like a monk of the greased palm, like create your oh. own? <laughs> oh yeah, something like that where you're actually using like a deflect arrow's feet. Yeah, that'd be cool. And with something like that, I'd probably do like you know a, a an attack roll maybe at disadvantage to see if you could redirect it at somebody else. Now you run at full speed, then you grease your body and leap, and then you just slide along your belly. Well, that's just that's just like a, a, a slip and slide. That's rad. I want to play that monk. Monk, and then two levels of wizard so I can get grease. <laughs> grease monk. You call me grease monkey. Oh, dear God. Hey, Jake. Hmm? I got a 20, a 23, and a 24 against your AST. All three will hit. That'll be eight, eight, uh, 16 plus six is 22. 22. All right. Give me a second. You feel the three blades cut deep in you and 
this time you can actually see the man behind you. All right. Well, he's got me rather annoyed. Okay. Well, I'm going to turn around, and he's getting the two claws and a bite routine. Not yet. You're not your turn. Oh, okay. Sorry. No worries. All good. Getting anxious to kill things. I know. <laughs> I can be annoying sometimes with these. With the, no, these no, no, no. That's all right. It's all Ins good. Inside, we have a Kavir. Be more specific. You. Oh. Uh, okay. Door. I guess I'll open that. <laughs> it seems like a self-explanatory yeah. kind of deal. And then as soon as I step out, instead of taking the obvious straightforward path, I'm going to move sideways along the room, my back to the wall. Because uh, I'm not sure exactly what he's set up in the room yet. I'm going to do that, and I'm going to roll perception checks. Are you heading upstairs or staying downstairs? No, I'm, I'm just, as soon as the door opens, like where I'd mm -hmm. come out where the fireplace is, I'm going to kind of like go flat against the wall and move at my maximum speed post okay. opening the door around the room. So All I right. don't walk through what he might have said. All right. See, nothing's really changed in this, in the hallway, except um, the plate's still there with the hair on it and the note. Has the hair changed position at all? Mm-mm. So probably not moving too quickly through here. That would have blown the hair around. He might still be in here. Investigate. All right. I'm going to, can I, can I roll multiple if I don't do another action? Sure. What are you looking for? I'm looking for any signs that he wouldn't have left. Like maybe the door on the other side's not open. The front door. Oh, it's gone. That's right. Thanks, Adrian. <laughs> uh, I assume if he was moving at that speed, right? With the, I'm assuming his long strider speed or whatever, uh, he would have created some sort of ripple in the wind. It would have pushed the hair off the plate. Right. So then he likely came out and then did the same thing I was doing. Kind of straddled the wall and moved sideways. I'm going to investigate to see if there's any dust that's moved or uh, if a curtain is kind of moving like something had brushed past it real quickly. All right. Not to be too specific, but any signs, uh, 18, 20, I get a third one. Oh, sure. tell me I get a third one. Yeah. 28. All right. In this, in the main hall, you don't see anything out of place, anything untouched, anything moved or transpired around the doors or anything. It's all roughly the way, you, I mean, it's all the way, the way you guys left it. The study is still open. The roof. Keeping an eye on the roof, too. Oh, you're looking up top? Of course you know, I'm looking up top. Climb. He did not spider climb on the roof. He is not hanging upside down laughing at you. That I can see. That you can see. He does have... Oh, I don't know that. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm keeping an eye out, and I'm going to shout down the stairs to be careful. Your turn, Adri. What you going to do? Uh, I could cast Locate Creature again. You can. I will cast Locate Creature on Kavir, Grand Vizier of the Dark Sight, a.k.a. Yeah. the Black Blight, a.k.a. the Oncoming Blightning. Blightning. It's like lightning, but blight. As you cast a spell, mm -hmm. it tells you he's up. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, he is. Okay. So he it's so exciting right now. <laughs> he went upstairs? Yes. Well, you saw him run upstairs. Okay. I'm going to move upstairs. All right. Where is he? Like, I'm going to stop in the doorway. You. Um, it tells you he's upstairs. Okay. Directly above me? Or like at an angle? At an angle. Okay. I'm going to point in the direction to that I sense evil Kavir. So that way, like, Kavir knows which, which direction it is. And then I guess I'll use the rest of my move to head towards the stairs. All right. How sparse are the floorboards, David? It's a relevant question. What do you mean? How much space is there between the roof, the, the floorboards that make up the, the ceiling, and the floorboards that make up the roof? 
or the the floor of the room he's in. Uh, 12 feet between the first story and the second? No, I mean the space between the boards. Oh, between the floors? Yeah, like if I were to put, like, say, a flashlight, would any light come through to the other side? Not the way you had the house built. Okay. Just curious. Worse. You actually had it built extremely well. Damn straight. Or had it improved extremely well. Welcome to Fortress de la Professional. Professional. Next week yeah. on Fortress de la Professional. Sounds good. Is Jake still alive? Yeah, he's still alive. He's spent the dogs. No, I don't, I don't mean in real life. I meant Trinicote. Is he still alive? Oh, yeah, alive? Trinicote. Is, yeah, he's alive. He's outside doing He's not petting any dogs because all his dogs are gone. <laughs> all right. Get angry, Jake. Run harder. Oh, no, I, I am very upset about that. Don't worry. Let the angry, the angry feelings from not having your wolves around fuel your run. All right. And it is Jake's turn outside. I guess I got to kill this fucker on me, huh? All right. Damn it. I was like, fuel your run, Jake. He's like, I got to stop and kill a guy. I got to stop and kill a guy. All right. Two claws. That's a 20 and a 10. I don't think the 10 would hit. No, the 10 doesn't hit, but the 20 does. And No, the 20 doesn't. Well, I got him with the bite. That's a 27. Yep. All right. And he's obviously going to be the target of my hunter's mark. So he takes 11 points. All right. Rachel went AFK to go kick that cat again. Right? Oh, my God. (laughs) That cat is having a bad day. Such a bad day. I hope you listeners try to save this cat. Donate to our Patreon today, and we'll save this cat from more cat kickings. Just dial 1-800-MIDNIGHT. We will take care of it. <laughs> I don't think we own that number. Don't call that number. Oh, dear God. <laughs> oh, my God. Are you going to get uh, some weird phone yeah. sex? <laughs> yeah, they're going to talk to you all about that back door. <laughs> Oh, gross. That's filthy. Have fun editing that, motherfucker. Right. Cat kicker, cat kicker. What? What? Huh? Completely behaved. Oh, God. Donate to our Patreon <laughs> to save that cat today. God. Please. Only you can make a difference. That cat did nothing wrong. <laughs> Thursday at 8 p.m. during your fucking dinner. <laughs> that cat had nothing to say to her foot <laughs> when she stomped on his neck. I, are you trying to say I kicked one of my cats? She stomped on that motherfucker. <laughs> in, in next week's episode, Rachel the Tyrant. <sighs> Alrighty. Um, the one outside. I love doing that voice. <laughs> Twenty-five, nine, and sixteen to Chunikote. Twenty-five will hit. All right. That does eight damage. Give me a con check. Ah, uh, nope. Don't get the con check. Alrighty. Take an extra 12 damage. Oh. You feel the your leg begin to stiffen up. Ooh, you got the good poison. And back to the professional. Professional. Okay. Uh, oh, God. She's got the cat. <laughs> <laughs> so it ain't He's holding so the it ain't hostage. Came over He's to got- me. Donate to the Patreon. We have to got save Stockholm him. Syndrome. Aww. Look at him. Oh, you kitty. The very next day, oh, the cat came back. Cat came back for more kickery. <laughs> uh, okay, that so she went. That's pretty. 
She went oh, upstairs. Kicking cats. That's why you guys don't hear Rachel because she muted it, so you can't hear her step on the cat. <laughs> yeah. It's oh. loud. It's loud. That cat makes a lot of. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> she doesn't give a fuck. <laughs> <sighs> You know, I'm just our listeners are the best because like they really? could complain. They could be like, yeah. They're beating animals on that podcast. And I'm like, no, not really. No. All all of it's fictional. Except for all that shit Rachel did. She oh my really, god. She really we did should, that. Someone called her. Oh dude. Movie. We should do the movie opening you and me talking about Rachel kicking cats as Dr. Oh, that'd be a great <laughs> opening for this episode. All that cat wanted was to live a life of flusher. <laughs> 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 Eating those fancy feast little individual wrapped fucking things with the water food in them. Whatever that shit with the gravy, the cat gravy. But that uh-huh. cat could not survive her owner stepping on it. Oh, not she bought night. boots with horns on them because they'd be more painful. <laughs> <laughs> she taped a knife to her foot. <laughs> <laughs> that poor cat got shanked every night. <laughs> This is so stupid. I can't. I'm going to cry laughing. <laughs> all right. All right. It is your turn, Agent Kavir. Okay. I'm sorry. Um, I'm going to go up the stairs. Oh, wait. No. He'd probably come out the window, wouldn't he? How would I get the fuck away from Adri? I'm going to dash outside. And I'm going to stand far enough back from the building so that I can look into the windows. Like, so, like, if he's... If he's in one of the rooms, then he'll be off towards the corner. You see Nick looking out the window at you. Yeah, I can't tell if that's him or not. Apparently, this guy has window rigged with, like, cardboard cutouts <laughs> of every person I know. I mean, Ducky's strong. She'll be fine, I think. And if not, me being there is not going to help. I just got to make sure he doesn't get away. And his way out would probably be to jump out one of the windows. Yeah. Or to like feather fall. I know I would feather fall out of a window. I've done that before. Okay, yeah. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna I'm gonna um use my speed to dash outside. Uh and then once I'm out there I'm going to summon the light or draw the light blade, summon the shadow blade. And I'm going to kind of hold the light blade up and put the shadow blade behind me <laughs> so that I can get the light uh, to try to see through the window in about the quadrant of the house, the, the, the quadrant of the house that I assume she was pointing to. And if I see, if I see um, Nick in the window, I'm going to be like, run kid, run. <laughs> <laughs> so, all right, Adrian, your turn. Okay. Um, I will, continue to follow uh, where I sense evil Kavir. All right. So you head upstairs? Yes. All right. Give me a dex check. Okay. Sure. Oh, that's real bad. Uh, nine. You hear a click under the step as you walk up. Mm. And it blows. Mm. Okay. 15 damage. Okay. From the explosion. That's fine. Give me a strength check to see if it pushes you back down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> this guy's awesome. He's a demolitions um, expert with a penchant for killing cat kickers. <laughs> <laughs> I did it all for the cat. 16. <laughs> <laughs> I had to stop myself. I almost said it the other way. I was like, never mind. <laughs> it, it sounds better for that song if you yeah. go the other way. <laughs> <laughs> what was the rule? 16. You're able to hold yourself without being blasted back down the stairs. All right. I continue up the stairs. You see Victor nothing would stop hallway. her from I'm sorry. What do I see? Victor standing in the hallway looking at you. Okay, I'm going to move around him and see if the uh evil career locator moves with him. It does, but as you pass them, it disappears. And it moves outside. What? Disappe- like a teleport? Mm. In a sense. Fucking scrolls, man. 
Um, which direction outside? Actually, directly outside. 30 feet. Okay. God <laughs> damn dimension door. Ground level? Yeah. Okay. Um, is there a window? Because I'm on the second floor now, right? Oh, there's a window you can see. So can I... You see Nick in the window. Okay. But it's it's past Nick. Yeah. Okay. So could I run past Nick and jump through the window and then maybe land you on or have near to break where... The that's I'm Oh I'm for fuck's sake, Rachel. <laughs> I'll be fine. This guy's just gonna zigzag back across the house <laughs> and just have you destroy our own base. <laughs> I wanna like, try this I wanna... juggernaut bitch is knocking walls down. <laughs> I'm the juggernaut, bitch. <laughs> <laughs> she don't give a fuck. <laughs> I'm the juggernaut, bitch. <laughs> the juggernaut. Oh, my God. Sorry, let me just write that down for the, the episode The title. juggernaut. That should be the title. Yeah, yeah. I'm the juggernaut, bitch. That's it. Okay. <laughs> that, we got our title. All right. Uh, uh, so, can I... I'm so zigzagging her through the house now. <laughs> can I run past Nick, jump through the window, and then land... Where I sense evil Kavir. Like, I want to land on top of him. Like, I want to cannonball. I, on know, top I just of need him. a strength check to go through the window. So I can cannonball on top of him. Mm, you won't be able to jump that far. What? <laughs> That's what I want. <laughs> like, okay. I mean, you can jump out the window. I mean, you can go for the ground. The ground will take you. Oh, you know what's so great is that I'm standing outside <laughs> yeah. watching. If he jumps out of the window and just hits the ground, I'm going to be like, I did not see that coming. <laughs> All right. So I need to strength check to jump through the window. Yeah. Okay. Eat glass. Okay. All right. Great. Uh, 21. Yeah. You shatter the glass, okay. the frame. You take the whole thing with you. Your forehead takes half the wall. Okay. Good. <laughs> good. Oh, God. And then Poor if Nick I have... ducks out of the way. <laughs> um. So I haven't cast anything. So do I still have enough movement to get to the right? No. So I can no. <laughs> you jumped out of a window. You went upstairs, survived the bomb, bong, and then jumped out the window. <laughs> I think your movement's done. Oh. No. <laughs> she jumped through a window, hits the is, ground. And I, is need an acrobat, I need an acrobatic check as you hit the ground. Sure. Okay. See if you're still standing. Okay. Um, oh, my God. Don't, she's going to dent her armor, too. 22. Somehow she magically ducks it. Superhero landing. Ducks it. Funny. So oh, you gotta have the superhero landing. Um, can you I gotta see have where it. Evil Kavir is? Since he's in front of you. Okay. So I land in front of him. No, I mean he's in front of you. In the direction. Oh, I can't Far. see him. No. Okay. You can start damaging other people's houses just I running could. a straight line. Oh, yeah. Um. Can I see? Can I see Arthur? You see the other Kavir? Yeah, you see okay. the other Kavir. I'm going to point in the direction that I sense evil Kavir. As <laughs> so I like stand up with shattered glass. <laughs> like bits of the window, like kind of like brush it off. I'm like, he's over that way. Once again, we want to thank you guys for listening to Freelance Heroism. We hope you're having just as much fun listening as we are playing. Visit us at facebook.com slash freelance heroism and leave us a like. If you want to see our adventures in comic form, The Professional illustrates our misadventures and more at 1d4rounds.com. If you want to support us, consider donating. We're at patreon.com slash freelance underscore heroism. Keep an eye out for rewards as we add them. Our theme music is Investigation by Devil Music, used under the Creative Commons license. You can find a link in the show notes. Our cast includes me, Dees Cassius, as Master Kivir the Professional, Rachel Moore as Adri the Ducky Cleric, Jake Sipple as Chunicote the Lupine Loose Cannon, and last but not least, our DM and Dr. Midnight, David Walker. Questions or comments? Send an email to freelanceheroismpodcast at gmail.com. 
And don't forget to give us a five-star review wherever you get your podcasts. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next week. In the meantime, the invoice is in the mail.